Okay guys, so I am going to give you a, an opportunity to do a couple of these exam questions. Um, you can have a quick look at the exam questions now, you can pause it, and then in just a second I'm going to do these questions that we have. Okay, so you might want to pause the video here, read through, and see if you can do them. Okay, so it says the curve with equation y equals 2 ln 8 minus x meets the line y equals x at a single point alpha. Show that alpha lies between 3 and 4. So it looks like what it's actually trying to get us to do here is to find out whether there is a solution for these two things. So whether it's going to be plus or minus. What I think I would do to begin with here is we've been told that y is equal to 2 ln 8 minus x and also y equals x. So if we make these things equal to each other we would have 2 ln 8 minus x equals x so I'm going to make it equal into a new function. So you could either do it this one minus this one or this one minus this one. I'm going to do that the function is 2 ln 8 minus x minus x. And then I'm going to substitute in 3 and I'm going to substitute in 4 and hope that I have a change in sign. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm taking the information from like the iteration diagram and putting it back into what would the original function have looked like. So I'm going to get one of the method marks just by showing I know I'm going to do the substitution. So I'm going to do 2 ln of 8 minus 3, minus 3, and then I'm just going to do the other one in my calculator. So that's 2 ln of 8 minus 3, minus 3, and we get 0.2188. And ln 4 is just going to be 2 ln of 8 minus 4, minus 3, which is minus 2.227. So we're going to say there is a change in sign. Also, f of x is continuous. So, alpha is between 3 and 4. That's what part A of the question should look like. Whoops, I don't like it when it does that. Let's get rid of that. Part B of the question. Okay, figure two shows these graphs, and it says a student uses this iterative formula in an attempt to find an approximation for alpha. So it's the same kind of setup that we've got before, and it says using the graph and starting with x1 equals 4. Notice they've started with x1 here. We've previously done everything with x0, but it's fine to do something with x1. It just says determine whether or not this iteration formula can be used to find an approximation for alpha, justifying your answer. So really what this one is asking for us to do is to do a staircase diagram. I'm going to have a look at putting my straight lines here. So remember, you go to the curve first, then the line, then the curve, then the line. So I'm going to go up to the curve, then the line, then the curve, then the line, and the curve, and the line, and the curve. And you can see what's happening here it is going to spiral into the root. So it says determine whether or not this iteration formula can be used to find an approximation. You can say yes, it can be used. The diagram shows a cobweb spirals, whoa, spirals inwards, converging, that's a good word to be using, converging to the root alpha, okay? So you get one mark in the diagram, one mark the explanation, say it can be used, and they're looking for cobweb spirals inwards, converging to the root. Okay, I'll leave this question here for you to have a look at and to pause, and then I will go through this one as well. Okay, it says figure 8 shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals x to the x, and only for the por portion where x is greater than 0 for that domain. First of all, find, by firstly taking logarithms, the x-coordinate of the turning point of c. So we've got the turning point of c that's happening here. And it talks about you can't use graphical or numerical methods for this bit that you've got. But in order to do this, this isn't really to do with iteration, but it's a nice refresher of some of the other things that we've got here. 
So we have got y equals x to the x. And we take logs of both sides. So if I take a log of this side, I'm going to get ln y equals ln of x to the x, which is just x ln x. And now we're going to have to differentiate this. Now to differentiate this is going to be a bit tricky because we've got some implicit differentiation and we've also got the product rule here. So I'm going to start off by doing a bit of the product rule over here. So I've got my u and I've got v. So u is x and v is ln x. So u dash is 1 and v dash is 1 over x. I'm going to use that for the product rule. And we know what ln y differentiates to. ln y will differentiate to 1 over y. But because it's implicit, we've got to do dy dx. Now I can do the product rule here. So it's going to be x times 1 over x, which is just 1. And this times this, which is plus ln x. So that means that dy dx is equal to um, y multiplied by 1 plus ln x. So that means we want dy by dx to be equal to 0 for a turning point. So we want y, 1 plus ln x, to be equal to 0. So that either means that y is equal to 0, or it means that 1 plus ln x has got to be equal to 0. Now, if you think about it, this can never be equal to 0. So we have that ln x is equal to minus 1. You know that the log of a number can never give you... Oh, it can give you a minus, actually. That's a silly thing for me to say. So let's have a look at this. We're going to see what x is equal to. So it looks like x would be e to the minus 1. There's me giving you some bad information there. So x equals e to the minus 1. x equals 0 0.3679. Seven, nine to four decimal places. Now, when y is equal to zero here, we're actually trying to say when is x to the x equal to zero. Now, that's going to be the thing that's going to be a bit difficult for us to find out because we're trying to say where does it cross the axis. So we can't actually solve this bit here because we know that when you raise something to a power, it is never going to be equal to zero unless x is equal to zero. So we could have that 0 to the 0, but if you try doing 0 to the 0 on your calculator, you get a math error. So this is the thing here that's going to lead us into part B. So the turning point, the x-coordinate, is this one that we have here. Right, it then says part B of the question, the point P, alpha 2, lies on C. Show that alpha is between 1.5 and 1.6. So let's have a look at this for a second. We've got alpha 2 lies on C. So we've got now that y equals 2. So we've been told for part B of the question that y is equal to 2. That means we've now got 2 equals x to the x. Now I want to make this into a function. So I'm going to say that f of x is equal to x to the x minus 2. And then I'm going to solve this using my previous things. So I've got here 1.5 and 1.6. So let's put in 1.5, so I'm going to get 1.5 to the 1.5 minus 2, and see what I get there. And that's negative 0.162 blah blah blah, so it's less than 0. And I'm now going to put in 1.6 into this, so it's going to be 1.6 to the 1.6 minus 2, and we're hoping this one's going to be positive. Point six to the one point six minus two, and it is positive. It's zero point one two one, which is greater than zero. So, change in sign. I'm going to get bored of writing this. Change in sign. F of x is continuous. So. Alpha is between 1.5 and 1.6. Only two marks, though. Feels like quite a lot of work we've got to do there. It says a possible iteration formula that could be used in an attempt to find alpha is xn plus 1 equals 2xn 1 minus xn. Using this formula with x1 equals 1.5, 
find x four to three decimal places, and then describe the long-term behavior. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit so I've got a little bit more space to do this. Oh, still want to see my iterative formula that I've got here. So I'm going to switch up my color. Okay, so I've been told that x1 equals 1.5. Let's get the method marked by just actually showing that I know what to do here. Again, they're using x1 rather than x0. It doesn't really matter. So x2 would be 2 times x1 to the power of 1 minus x1. But again, I'm going to just put this in my calculator, and what I'm going to write on my calculator is 2 answer to the power of 1 minus answer. And to begin with, I'm going to put 1.5 equals, so I have it as the answer. So that's 2 answer to the power of 1 minus answer. We get that x2 is 1.63299. I'm going to do x3, and then I'm going to do x4 as well. So x3 is 1.4663 to four decimal places. And I'm going to get that x4, whoops, x4 is equal to 1.6731. Now, something strange looks like it's happening. I've gone 1.5, 1.6, 1.4 something, 1.6 something. Part D of the question says to describe the long-term behavior of xn. So what you could keep doing is just writing these further values down to see what happens. So x5, you get 1.41. x6, you get 1.73. x7, you get 1.38. x8, you get 1.81. What does it look like is happening to these values? Yeah, it looks like they're getting further and further apart from each other. And if you keep pressing the equals button in your calculator, they are not going to converge. So the long-term behavior is the long-term behavior. Of X N is non convergent. Do you remember earlier on I said it's kind of easier to show if it's oscillating or bouncing away from different things. It's just better to say that it doesn't converge. So just say that it is non-convergent that we have here. So there's more than enough practice that you guys can be doing on these first two exercises. So that's exercise 10B and 10C. Next time I do some videos for you this week, it is going to be on the next thing, which is the Newton-Raphson process or the Newton-Raphson method. Okay. Any questions? Let me know. More than happy to help out, guys.